Okay, so we just read The Three Billiards Rough, and if you notice, there's a lot of different textures and patterns going on in the background, like with the trees and the hair texture that you saw in the actual billy goats, um, and then all those stones that we saw up on the, um, on the bridge. So now we're going to be making our own patterns, thinking about what we see every single day. So if I were to look outside right now, I might see a wood pattern. And so wood pattern kind of goes like this, and it kind of goes back and forth. And sometimes there are these little knots to the big round eyes in wood. And whenever you have one of those, the grain around the wood has to go around that eye. So I'm just going to make some back and forth patterns going around. All right, so another thing I see every day when I come to work and come here to school is I see the playground. And on the playground, there's a bunch of patterns. And if I look on the roof of the playground, I see a scalloped edge, which kind of looks like a cloud. So it kind of looks like this. And I'm just going to put them in different areas. I'm going to show that they overlap each other. So I... It kind of looks like this, a cloud line, and then it overlaps each other on top. And these are things that I see in patterns I see every day, or almost every day. All right, so that's the roof of the playground. All right, so the next thing that I see every day is the black top. And that looks like a bunch of little stones all piled together, together next to each other. So I'm going to do some of those really wiggly edges, kind of fit on top of each other. And that's going to be what I see every day. Because remember, this is every day because those belly goats were stuck over on that side of the hill that didn't have any food. And they had to get past the mean old troll so that they could have grass every day. Okay, so that's another thing that I see every day. And then the last thing I'm going to do is when I'm driving, I see those yellow dashed lines every day. So notice that I'm filling up my paper with these. And I might do maybe one or two more patterns behind here. Hmm. What else do I see every day? Every day, ooh, I see the leaves on the tree when it's springtime and summertime. So I'm going to draw maybe some leaves which kind of look like football shapes. I'm going to do those overlapping and behind things. So you can see what's on top and what's behind it because like this the leaves are going behind the road pattern and behind the roof and behind the dash lines on the road. And I can show you all of these. I'm going to show you that these look more like leaves by putting the little lines in there. And notice I'm not coloring these in because what we're actually going to do next is we're going to take watercolors, and those are a type of, of paint, and we're going to paint on top of this. And a watercolor is very special in that the more water you put into it, the lighter the color gets. I'm going to finish doing a couple leaves here. All right, and show you what a watercolor looks like. So many of you might have these at home. If I flip this up, they don't all look super pretty. It's totally okay. So how you use a watercolor set, I'm going to put my water cup over here, so you guys can all see what I'm doing. All right. So how you use it is you dunk, you dunk your paintbrush in the water, and you, I'm just rolling it around to get a lot of water in there, and wipe it off so it's not dripping. And I'm going to go into my first color, and I think the first color that I'm going to use is this green right here to do my leaves. So I'm going to put some water on it. If you notice, I now have that green color on the tip of my paintbrush. So I can come back down and paint directly over it. And if you notice, wherever I put that crayon, it's not going to show up. So I have a lot of water on this. So here, let me show you again. See how it's not filling in where I had the crayon? Yeah. All right. So. That's what we're going to do. Um, when you guys want to change colors, all you have to do 
is wash out your paintbrush. And notice I just keep pulling paint from this one leaf because it was super full of paint. And I didn't want it to be that dark. And notice as I'm running out of color, there's still a little bit of pigment. And pigment is what that color actually is. Um, left on the paintbrush, but it's not as strong as that first one. So if I go back into the color, it'll be very strong again. See that? And then I can kind of mix it in there. And then if my color is getting too dry, I just can put a little bit more water, and I can keep going. Okay, and then just an example of how to wash it out. Wash it out, wipe it on the side, and then go into your next color. So maybe my next color is going to be my brown for my wood color. And then I can just go over it, get a little bit more water in there, because I want it to be a little bit lighter, and go over this whole thing. At the end of the day, your paper should be totally filled in with watercolor paint. All right, guys. So if you have any other colors, or any other colors, if you have any other questions, let me know as always. But. And that's what we're doing. We're going to do crayon resist.